Welcome to the Brain Warrior's Way podcast. I'm Dr. Daniel Amen. And I'm Tana Amen. Here we teach you how to win the fight for your brain to defeat anxiety, depression, memory loss, ADHD, and addictions. The Brain Warrior's Way podcast is brought to you by Amen Clinics, where we've transformed lives for three decades using brain spect imaging to better target treatment and natural ways to heal the brain. For more information, visit amenclinics.com. The Brain Warrior's Way podcast is also brought to you by BrainMD, where we produce the highest quality nutraceutical products to support the health of your brain and body. For more information, visit brainmdhealth.com. Welcome to the Brain Warrior's Way podcast. So before we get started today, I want to just read a very short, sweet testimonial. Um, someone who's been listening to the podcast, I love this. So I think I do this more for for me, for us, than, <laughs> than anybody, because I love it so much. Um, this one says, this is by Ollie. I love Dr. Daniel and Tana Amen. I look forward to their podcast every week. Each episode, I learn new things to apply to my life for a longer life. I would choose a brain scan with them over an all-expense paid vacation. Thank you. God bless you guys for all you do. That's so that. awesome. Yes. You so know, we love hearing that what we're doing is making a difference. So thank you for sending these in. Well, our friends, Joel um, Chambers and Michael Peterson, when they got married, um, they gave themselves the gift of getting scanned right. so they could see their brains, optimize them, and have a better marriage. Right. I think that's awesome. So it makes a great gift. Uh, t today we're going to talk about grief yeah. because it is rampant in in our society. Well, we, none nearly, of us can escape it, right? I mean, it's near, you, nearly all, all of us experience it at at some point, right? And we had something at uh, at the office happen where someone near and dear to us lost uh, their sweetheart. Um, of a heart attack, somebody who was apparently healthy. And, and not very, very young, actually. Very young. And it's heartbreaking. It's devastating. Yeah. And it just reminds me, and she, and she and I were just texting, and it, it reminds me of the story of Chris mm -hmm. and, and Sammy. So Chris lost her daughter, Sammy, uh, to bone cancer, I think five or six years ago now. Right. And Sammy was only 12. So, you know, even more heartbreaking. And after Sammy died, Chris just, she couldn't deal with the pain and went to bed and drank too much, ate bad food, gained a lot of weight. And on the second year anniversary of Sammy's death, Chris had planned to kill herself. Yeah. And then uh, a friend of hers gave her um, my book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Body. And she said, well, if it's a bad book, <laughs> I'll kill myself That's tomorrow. Terrible. That's actually <laughs> terrible. And when she told me that, I'm like, there's so much pressure That's on me when I write awful, these books. Right? Um but she said it was a great book and I just did everything you asked me to do mm -hmm. and I stopped drinking and I stopped eating bad food and I started to walk and she said literally within eight days she stopped waking up with panic So, attacks. So this is a really good point and I don't want to I don't want to gloss over this because those of us who've experienced grief of any kind um, the normal thing to do or that the typical thing to do is to comfort yourself somehow. And as a society, we've learned to comfort ourselves. Um, it's like, oh, I just want to bury this pain. And so you do that with either alcohol or food or, you know, whatever it is that we do that sort of just immediately helps to squelch that that immediate pain. But the problem is with that, if you're doing that over a period of time and not a very long time, over a period of a few days, that begins to actually affect the way your brain functions. 
So as that happens, it's actually going to magnify and people don't realize it. So it starts off sort of dulling that pain, but then all of a sudden it increases depression. It actually affects things like anxiety. It affects your sleep. And so now all of a sudden it has this ricochet effect, right? So you, this is why we want you to know that when you're doing that, it's the long-term effect is going to be worse. Well, and I had met her two months later when she's down 24 pounds. She was running every day. And then over the next year, she ended up losing a lot more weight and getting back to where she was before Sammy died. And she said, now I know Sammy would have never wanted me to get into that state mm -hmm. and never let grief be your excuse Absolutely. to hurt yourself. And, but y you bring up a really important point is the pain is so bad. Yeah. And I know when I went through a period of grief, I, I had chest pain. I mean, I literally went to the doctor, thought I was having a heart attack. And when you lose someone you care about, your heart starts to beat funny. Mm -hmm. There's actually a thing in the literature, your heart's not broken, but it's not beating right, right and that causes chest pain. And um, sugar is a short-term fix. I mean, it works. And alcohol. Um, so alcohol calms down the bad feelings and sugar raises serotonin in the brain and so it makes you feel better the problem is it also increases inflammation right which increases the risk of depression right and dementia right and i know when i went through grief it's like i couldn't remember anybody's name right i mean was, you just you just feel stupid and so um <clears throat> This person that works with us, I was just texting with her, and I'm like, get magnesium glycinate. Yeah. Uh, help you 400 sleep. milligrams. Mm -hmm. Not only it help you sleep, but it'll help your heart beat yeah. in a more I take normal 400 every night. rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the first thing, never let grief be your excuse right. to hurt yourself. And then there are specific things you can do. So we talked about magnesium. The other important thing that's really helpful is journaling. Absolutely. Is journal your thoughts because that will help them get out of your head and then they won't circle because you know you've already written them down. Well, and there's something about journaling that is very healing anyways um, when you're able to, it helps you process. Um, but I also, it's really interesting one of the things that I want to add to that list is be honest with yourself about like have a conversation with yourself about what the other person would want. And that's not always that easy to do, especially if you're a parent and we're talking well, about I kids. I know what you would want. You would want me to be <laughs> awful. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You have threatened but, to come back but, and haunt me. <laughs> no, seriously. As like, especially if it's um, a parent, like losing Sammy. Okay. So I went and saw the movie, The Shack with my daughter okay we, we took chloe to see the shack now that is my greatest fear has been my greatest fear forever if you haven't seen the movie it's it's awful it's a hard movie to watch because it's about a little girl who's kidnapped and basically killed by a, by this sex offender so that's always been my biggest fear and why because i not only love my child because i am I'm a sheepdog and protective by nature and we think it's our responsibility, right? So this is this is that that thing that's our biggest fear. And as I watch this movie, it's about forgiveness and I kept wrestling with myself. No, I wouldn't be able to do it. And then they make their point and I'm like, "Oh, that would that just hurt. That hurts so bad to like think of I'd have to forgive that person." And then all of a sudden I'm back to no, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I'm watching this with my daughter. And she saw me crying and she looked at me. It's almost like she could read my mind and because she knows how protective I am. But she said something so powerful to me. And she said, I just want to tell you right now, I know you're thinking that you would want to go find that person. I know you're thinking that you would want to go hurt that person and do something awful to the person that hurt me if that happened to me. And she said, and 
I'm just going to tell you now, you can't do that. You, I'm just going to tell you, you, you could never do that. And I'm like, you can't say that. Like, you can't say that. You can't. And she's like, no, you can't because I would be so disappointed. I would be so upset. And I'm like, take it back right now. <laughs> she goes, no. She said, because, you know, if I did have any way of knowing, I would be so disappointed because it would ruin. Like, I, she goes, the only thing that would ever make me happy is knowing that you found some way to make sense of it. This is my 13-year-old telling me, the only thing that would ever make me happy is knowing you found some way to make sense of it and some way to be happy again. And I thought, oh my gosh, how does a kid, you know, I'm thinking my job is the only thing that would ever make sense of it is to have vengeance, to, have vengeance, to, to like, to be angry. Well, no, to, to get, get back for her, to get them back for her. And she's, you have to know what's in their head because she's like, no, the only thing that makes sense is you being happy again. And I'm like, well, how does a 13 year old come up with that? You know, I mean, it's crazy. So I really like that. So what would that person- Think about what they would want for you. Want for you. Would they want you to spend your life being miserable and angry and seeking revenge? Or would they want you to find peace? You know, would they want you to find love and peace? And, you know, I, that just blew my mind. So apparently I'm not allowed to seek revenge. <laughs> So I've been, I've been ordered. I'm like, take it back right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are some examples of grief? Um, oh dear Lord, I've got two that are just terrible, um, just so painful. Um, one of my best friends, who I just was just with, um, just minutes before I came here, Sandra. She is. She actually now has a very large women's ministry at Saddleback Church. She's an amazing person. She's one of the reasons I chose her as a mentor is because she's what I'm not. She's one of those people, you know, we choose people to help us become better at, at the things we're not good at. Um, her daughter was killed by a drunk driver. And this person, he was, so I'm thinking all along that, oh, it's probably someone older. And it turns out this was a 21 year old kid, but he had been arrested multiple times um, for various things and didn't show a lot of remorse. And Sandra, rather than being really angry, she was really, really depressed and didn't even come out of her house for three months. And she had a friend who helped her through this time and finally said, okay, today we're walking outside. And then, you know, a couple of days later, today we're going to get in the car and go for a drive. And then it was just, she just helped her. She just sat with her in quiet for months mm. and just helped her sort of through it. And then she said, today we're going to the store. You know, I mean, she just kind of helped her through that grief. But Sandra, what I thought was so interesting, Sandra ended up pleading for mercy for this kid. Now, they threw the book at the kid. The judge did because he already had priors. He was, was, he was you know, three strikes. But... But she ended up saying, you know, there's no reason to ruin another life. Let's figure out a way to rehabilitate him. And I thought that that was amazing. I mean, talk about grace. That was incredible. So losing someone you love. Yeah. Animals. Animals. Oh, my gosh. It's a big deal for a lot of people. My dad lost his dog that he had for eight years to completely attached to uh, Vinny and he was actually very sad after that um, losing your job yeah losing your marriage to divorce yeah it, oh that's actually I think people don't put enough stock in that that's a massive change I mean, not for everybody. Some people are... Some people celebrate. Celebrate. But for, mo for most normal people, even if you know it's a not a healthy relationship, it's still a big loss of what you dreamed you would have, of what you expected it to be. Um, Having a child with a disability. Oh, like yes. Like autism. Yeah. Or my granddaughter who uh, was born with a genetic microdeletion syndrome that's involved with seizures and uh, developmental delays uh, yeah. you know i've seen that thank god not for my daughter and her husband but uh, 85 percent mm -hmm. of couples that have uh, a sick child like that end up getting divorced because you lose the idea of what you thought would happen mm -hmm. 
and it's very hard and is often the cause of uh, sadness and mm -hmm. depression and really what it is it's grief right so if you are the family member of someone trying to support someone going through a major loss or you're a friend and you're trying to support someone going through a major loss let's talk about what that looks like and and maybe you're also experiencing it say it's you're the child and you've lost a parent uh, but you've also you've lost you know one of your parents and the other parent is going through um, this horrible grief. What can you do to support? So we them? should write an article: ten things you should never do right. when someone's going through grief. Tell them not to feel that way, or they're in a better place. Like that's not what they really want to hear at the time. Um, you know, usually just being there with them is is a lot more helpful. Don't go get drunk with them. <laughs> You know, one thing that I noticed, um, so my mom recently went through terrible grief a couple years ago. She was uh, very much in love and her husband died. Um, they did everything together. They were really, really close. And when he died, she just went through a terrible, terrible grief. Um, and I noticed something. She was so lonely that her, do you remember that? She, her depression was overwhelming for her. I do. She began to scare me. Um, that she went into this deep depression and just didn't really care about much, her business, nothing. And so I noticed this and I could tell that she was really lonely. And, you know, she, I knew she wanted to do something to sort of change this, this feeling. It's really interesting. She, she started thinking about going on to some online sort of dating site, not so much to date, just to meet someone to hang out with but she was so worried about what everyone was going to think and she was really worried about what i was going to think or what other people were going to think and if you are in that position i remember stepping back and thinking well number one what i really think and what i care about is that my mom is healthy right i want my mom to stay with us for as long as possible and depression is not how it's going to happen right she's more likely to get really sick right depression, social isolation, they all negatively affect your immune system, right? making it more likely you're going to get sick. Right. And if you've lost a parent, that can be really painful. But do you want to lose the other parent? So I just want you to think about that. It's like as, it, as you're judging, as you're judging, it's like you can't go out with someone else or you can't meet someone else or even have be friends with someone of the opposite sex. Just stop and think for a minute because it's so lonely for someone who's older to be alone and isolated. You're likely to take years off of their life. So it's just something to think about. And I'm not saying that, you know, you, you're going to have to process it your own way, but I selfishly want to keep my mom here. So I actually helped her. <laughs> so I helped her figure out how to, you know, and she actually has someone who's a friend. I mean, they're mostly just friends. They hang out, they do things together. They're, I mean, it's amazing, but they, it works out really well. And he had lost his wife and um, so was going through something very similar. So, you know, I don't want to lose her because of grief. So, um, so don't engage in bad behaviors with them. Right. Um, connected, stay connected. You don't have to talk, but sending a text, like Sandra's sending friend. an email, be- Just sit with them. Yes, connected. Right. And it's okay to talk about when you lost someone that's important, just so you have that common bond. And I think some of the things that are helpful are, um, I'm here for you. I'm sorry, you know, as opposed to they're in a better place or, you know, it's something like that, that, that is really hard for people to hear. And, and mostly people mean well. I know when my, my aunt lost, um, oh, it was just so awful. Um, my 20 year old cousin, this is years ago, but my 20 year old cousin was in um, a military accident. He was killed in the military and uh, it was just awful. But his two best friends, she didn't get same thing. She didn't get out of bed for a long time. She was just devastated. And I remember her on the phone saying, I just don't know if I can take my next breath. It's everything I can do to take my next breath. So his friends came over and didn't say one word. They went into her dark room where she had everything blacked out and was just laid in bed for months, actually. They just went in her room and just laid down on the bed next to her. Didn't say a word. But she's to this day remembers that being the thing that was the probably the most supportive 
um, just being with her, you know? So be with them, bring them healthy food. Right. Um, it's really trying to engage in those brain healthy habits that help you feel the most. And one of the things my good friend Byron Katie told me is don't block your feelings. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually when you were torturing me. <laughs> <laughs> when you and our beginning of our relationship, Tana tortured me a lot. I she did come, not, did not torture him. I wanted to be clear, okay? Oh, no, it's clear. <laughs> she tortured me a lot. Uh, and one of those times that you had left, and, and I just... Adore you. you cannot say that without explaining. I had been through a really bad divorce and I needed to know that I, I wasn't going to pretend and commit to something before I knew that I, I didn't trust my own judgment. Now, now can we move on? <laughs> but I, I, there's a point to this besides torturing you. <laughs> and, and the point is that the most important thing she said to me is don't block your feelings. Yeah. Feel what you're feeling. And if you cry, cry right. as much as you need to. So feel what you feel. Don't block it. Right. Don't try to push it away and then confront whatever thoughts right. are there, which is why journaling is such an important thing to do. Yeah. I love one of her lines, argue with reality and welcome to hell. Argue with reality and welcome to hell. So when you block it, that's hell. really what you're doing is you're arguing with reality. So argue with reality, welcome to hell. And so the journaling can be so helpful. The other thing is, the other reason I like journaling is because you want to acknowledge the truth of the feelings and the truth of what happened. You don't want to make it worse than it was. So you don't want to minimize it and you don't want to make it worse than it was. And we can sometimes do that as well. So... The most important thing, I mean, there is a cycle of life that, I mean, one of the most beautiful parts of life is being able to breathe and being connected and uh, being in love and all of us die. Right. So we're all dying just at different rates, just at, at different rates. And, and so, so cherish each moment, each day that when something like this happens, um, that it just is a reminder to cherish each moment you have and not take each other for granted. Yeah. Stay with us. You're listening to The Brain Warrior's Way. We are so grateful that you are with us. Uh, I wanna start by reading a testimonial uh, that I just love. Uh, over a year ago, I fell into a horrendous pit of anxiety and depression and found myself without hope. Using the principles you talk about in the Brain Warriors Way podcast, I found that my habits were playing a huge part in my spiral. I fixed all of these things and became very serious about brain health. And boom, completely healed. <laughs> I, I love, love that. that part. It's like, <laughs> drop the microphone, boom. Right, walk off. I'm healed. Walk off stage. Now, doesn't always happen like that, but what we want for you is to be serious about brain health because when you are, you feel so much better and we hope well, what you'll I, be like this person and say, boom, completely. So what I love about that is there's no fairy dust here, right? We don't have a magic wand. We're not like, this isn't a cult, okay? So people are like, I don't understand how this thing works. It works because we're going after all the things that are leading you down that road to depression, anxiety, obesity, you know, losing your memory. And we're going after all of them. And we're teaching you do an assessment, figure out what you're doing that's causing these problems. And we're teaching you not only that you can do it, how to do it, but that it's not that hard. So, you know. Well, brain health, you know, I always say is like super easy. Right. It's three things. Brain envy. You got to care about it. Freud was wrong. Penis envy is not the deal. <laughs> He's like two and a half feet, 
too low in your body. Oh, right? okay, he's then. Focused, I always liked being a girl, so I don't he's know. He's focused on the wrong <laughs> organ. Um, brain M, you got to care. Avoid anything that hurts it and do things that help it. I mean, and ultimately, you got to know the list. Right. And that's and, what we do is we teach you. And do it with a great attitude. Right. Because, you know, people go, oh, I don't want to deprive myself. Or, oh, it's too hard. And I'm going to find this text uh, from my friend uh, Miley Cyrus, who gave me permission, actually, to share Isn't it. Isn't it fun when you finally get permission to use those? Well, we have so many and we can't use them. Especially from someone... It's, it's if you've seen her in the news recently, um, she's been, it's hilarious because my daughter follows her a lot and, and she was the biggest pothead and she talks about it. She jokes about it. So you, when you, if you've seen any of her recent interviews, they're hilarious when she talks about how much she used to smoke. Well, and last week I just got to speak to 7,000 Oh, teams. and you were, I'm going to say this, you were in your element. Chloe and I were there. I've, Chloe looked at me, she goes, What? is happening she's like what is this place literally there were almost five thousand genius high school kids they were like all geniuses it was like crazy stuff like they already have detected a 15 year old who found early detection for prostate breast and liver cancer what okay so these kids are like like out of control smart and five thousand of them right and you get up to speak and you get a standing ovation before you even start and i'm like chloe looked at me and she's like what is this? What is happening right now? She's like, she's like, he's a rock star for nerds. <laughs> it was hilarious. It Our was the geek funniest thing. concert. So I was yeah. getting ready for the concert. And the concert. For the, <laughs> it's my little Justin Bieber moment. <laughs> Let me have it. And I have a part in there on who has more fun. The kid with the good brain or the kid with the bad brain. Right. Who's who making gets, good decisions or bad decisions. Who gets the girl and gets to keep her because he doesn't act like a oh, jerk. Oh, and all the girls start <laughs> screaming like crazy because they're like, yeah, no jerks. Preach it, brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who gets into the college they want to get into, who has the best job, takes the coolest vacation, makes the most money. And so I, I knew I was going to do that part in the concert. And... Uh, so I text Miley, who I knew had stopped smoking pot about 12 weeks ago. I'd actually sent her our study right. on... Uh, it just took a while for it to kick in. A thousand <laughs> people, um, you know, potheads compared to healthy, it's, it's, potheads have lower activity in virtually every right. area of their brain. Um, and then she stopped. And So let um, me just say, it's not a judgment we're not judging you for smoking pot. We're telling you what happens in your brain. So anyway, so I texted her um, week before last and I said, so what do you think? Are you having more fun with your good brain habits or your bad ones? And she texted me back. Ha! Good! Exclamation point. By a billion yeah it was really cute uh i was and and so i got to share that at the the lecture and the kids went wild uh, it was really cute. and that's that's what we want for you we you know brain health three things brain envy you gotta care avoid anything that hurts your brain drugs alcohol head trauma um pot um also bad food not sleeping and then do things that help your brain. Right. And we came across this study about toxins. Right. So interesting. So we're talking about doing all these things that you know, like you know, right? You want to do the right things. But what about when you don't know? Okay? And when you think you're, you doing, think you're doing the, doing the right, right thing. thing. Like putting sunscreen on. Right. So any of you who took chemistry, right? Some of you liked it. Some of you hated it. But one of the fun parts about chemistry is mixing all these things together and getting crazy reactions, right? Sometimes they explode. Sometimes they turn different colors. All these different things happen. But who would have thought, right? We think we're doing the right thing. You put sunscreen on your body. And the study just came out. I guess it was at the Moscow State University. Um, uh, just published a study that basically showed that 
when you put sunscreen on, which sunscreen by itself can be very toxic if you don't get the right sunscreen. Um, so but, you have to read the ingredients. Right. So and um, so the, the app um, Think Dirty or Skin Deep, both of those apps can really help you. Um, but when you put sunscreen on and you get into chlorinated water, so those of you with kids, right? my daughter's whole life, I've been putting sunscreen on her because she's very, very pale. She's got very, very light skin. So I'm putting like a hundred, right? Sunscreen of a hundred on her. So she doesn't fry like a little tomato. And then she goes swimming all day and I keep reapplying it and reapplying it. And this new study came out that it said, um, deadly combination of chlorinated water, you and UV rays can reduce compound in sunblock into toxic chemicals linked to infertility, immune system damage, and even cancer. What? Like, just you, when you are so evil. I know. And I'm trying so hard. Isn't that awful? It's awful. That you think you're doing the right thing and then you get new information. But what I want you to think about is what goes on your body goes in your body. And so it's critical that we read the labels. But and those when I was combinations can so, sometimes w the one thing isn't as bad. You mix it with something else, and all of a sudden you have a whole new compound. And then when I was working on Memory Rescue, my new book coming out in November, um, which I think you can pre-order on Amazon, um, it, it's based on this really simple idea: if you want to prevent Alzheimer's disease. If you want to keep your memory healthy for as long as possible or get it back if you think it's going to the dark place, you have to prevent all the risk factors that we know destroy your brain. Right. And I developed a mnemonic called Bright Minds that highlights those 11 risk factors. And the T in bright uh, for Bright Minds is toxins. Mm -hmm. And as I was working on this book, that's when I developed this idea, whatever goes on your body goes in your body. Uh, I learned about the app, Think Dirty, downloaded it, and started scanning things on my side of the bathroom. And then you started scanning things on your side of the bathroom. We literally threw out 80%. Yeah, I didn't tell you. I ended up bathroom. rescuing most of it for our end of the world stash, but... <laughs> <laughs> So I figured if we're not going to use it on ourselves, we can even use it as weapons, I suppose. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's now in our in our apocalyptic room. <laughs> oh, Terry wants to talk to you about doing a whole series on what to do. Oh, you There's have an no earthquake. idea. I'm like, yeah, I'm the queen. You know, or a nuclear attack or Oh, I've whatever. totally. I've, but let's stay yeah. with the topic. Okay. Anyway. Toxins. <laughs> what goes on your body goes in your body. Right. And this one study just highlights how important it is not to put toxic things Absolutely. on your body. So what's a mother to do if she's got a pool and she's got kids? Yeah, it's really hard and it's summer. And I mean, the pool for me was the best babysitter. I mean, make no mistake about it. You just have all the friends over, go out in the pool, you sit out there in the shade and you just watch them all swim because- Well, everybody has sunscreen on. Everybody's got sunscreen on. And you're poisoning their little immune system. So, and who knew, right? So, I mean, I guess the one thing, especially if you've got a child like mine, who's really, really fair. I mean, I'm really fair. She's more fair than I am. So um, I guess the one thing with this- with this um, study that I'm not clear about that I want to dig into a little more to answer the question, I want to know which compounds are turning because there are different types of sunscreen, right? So I have some sunscreens that are natural. Are those breaking down as well? Is it the titanium dioxide or is it the chemicals? Because titanium dioxide um, is just that it's that barrier, right? It's, it's not really. So I'm thinking that maybe if you get one that's more natural that has titanium dioxide, maybe it's better but I don't know yet. I actually don't know. The other thing is you can try to do more swimming in the early hours or the later hours. Um, that's another thing. And the third thing is, you know, I don't know, try to get some shade over certain parts of your pool if that's even possible. And I, that's, you know. So I like early hours or late hours. Some sun is actually good because that's how we right, get but vitamin we, we D. We mostly overdo it. And that's the hard part where we live, where we live people tend to overdo it and damage their skin and cause problems because it's sunny all year long. So that's hard. So, so I tell my patients 20 minutes a day, right. 
the sun it is doesn't good have to be in the it hottest helps part of the elevate day. Elevate your vitamin D levels. Right. Never get burned. Burns bad. But you know, we were made in the sun. But we, we can you can go at ten in the, in the morning, sun. you can go at the four dermatologists in the won and they made everybody afraid of the sun. And there's a higher incidence of breast cancer and other and forms depression. of cancer with vitamin D levels low. Brand new study just out today. I mean, studies are just on and on over and over with vitamin D right. that the incidence of colon cancer yeah. significantly higher in people who have low levels versus those who have high levels. So normal is between 30 and 100. For people who are above 40, compared to people below 20, they have half the risk of cancer. Wow. So you can cut your risk in half. And so, so I, I would advocate some sun, 20 minutes, never get burned, and cover up so you don't, so more hats, right. less sunscreen, especially if you're going to go in a pool so that I, has chlorine. So I just noticed something um, as I read a little, I just did a little bit of reading really quickly. Um, it, one of the chemicals that is bad, avobenzone. So take a look at your sunscreen and see if avobenzone, um, and it's a, that's a derivative of a, of a compound called dibenzylmethane, dibenzylmethane. Um, so avobenzone's most popular UV filter in the world. So it's not titanium dioxide. That is apparently that's mostly, that's the one mostly used the chemical. And that's the one that's been studied in this. Um, oh, it's also in lipsticks <laughs> and other cosmetics. So pay well, attention. Well, you have to be careful who you kiss. Right. Did you know, and I also talk about this in the book, that 60% of the lipsticks sold in the U.S. has lead in it. Yeah. I call it the kiss. Especially, especially the long wearing ones. So I just wanted to make sure I put that out there because that is good to know. So look for one that's more natural, that doesn't have that in it, that might be using titanium dioxide. dioxide. Um, and also it says um, to avoid, uh, we already knew this, um, and the, those, those apps we told you about will actually help you, avoid aldehydes, phenols, and acetylbenzenes. So those, um, will, those apps will show you if those are in your products. Well, the cool thing about Think Dirty is it'll tell you on a scale of one to 10 how quickly your products are killing you. Right. And so you, you get a choice. And you know, another thing I've been thinking about a lot recently is the brain hates change. The brain hates change. And so when people get this idea, it's like, well, what could I do? I, I, you know, and you, you almost, your brain wants to default to what it's always done. Right even though it may not be good for you. That's why we say this is a war. It's why the podcast is called The Brain Warrior's Way, because you're actually in a war with your own brain that wants to keep doing the things it's always done. So a few things you could do to detox. Let's talk about that really quick. If you've been doing some of these things, detoxing is really important. So we wanna leave you with some things you can do to detox, right? So. Um, so on a regular basis, didn't you say there was a study about people who use a sauna? I did. So if you think about detox, so um, I don't know about you. I think we're the same, but I'm not really a fan of two-week cleanses. I'm a fan no. of living your life detoxed. Right. It's Well, two-week cleanse, I'm not a fan of juice cleanses. Like that's not realistic to do long-term juice cleanses. Or like eat like crap most of the year and then right. do a two-week. No, live clean. I'm a client. I'm a fan of living your life, right. getting rid of the toxins in, in your life. And so to, to detox, you want to support the four organs of detoxification. Right. So your kidneys drink more water, right? Skin, your um, gut, eat more fiber, right? Move it on out and water your liver. I like N-acetylcysteine right. and kill the alcohol. I'm not just a fan because it is hard on your liver, as is fructose, right. fruit sugar. And your skin and sweating is one of the most important things 
to, to detox. Right, so, so sweating, so saunas. Intense exercise. And, you and there's a study from Finland yeah. that showed people who took the most saunas had the lowest incidence of dementia. So if you don't have access to a sauna, one thing that a lot of people do is you can do dry brushing, like with a loofah on your skin, dry brush that the dead skin off a lot of people do that and you can you know make your shower sort of steamy and hot i mean saunas are better if you can get one if you you know you have a gym or somewhere you go to but if not then at least get your shower steamy for a while right that's actually a good sort of substitute and make sure you're drinking a lot of water now notice liver skin kidney um gut and gut water for all of them right? So water, water, water. One thing Chloe and I do in the mornings, um, we haven't gotten you on board yet, but is the, you'll do the lemon in your water, but we do lemon water with ginger and cayenne pepper um, because it's supposed to be detoxifying. It's good for not only your skin, but your liver and getting everything going. And it's, it's sort of alkalinizing, right? So it's an alkaline um, type of reaction in the body. So water. And cayenne pepper boosts blood flow right. to the brain so it can help wake you up. Right. Some people are sensitive to it. You don't have to put that in. So that's actually really good. And then, um, so drink more. So green drinks, a lot of people like green drinks for detoxifying, and that's good. They are detoxifying. However, every time we say this, so there are some people who either have thyroid or kidney problems. Yes, you do have to know if you have thyroid or kidney problems. There are things in green drinks um, that are like goitrogens. So you want to be careful, know and talk to your doctor if you're not Explain supposed to eat. Explain what that is. People so don't know goitrogens what are um, sometimes goitrogens. a lot of right things that can affect your thyroid that actually lead to goiters or problems with your so thyroid. Your big thyroid. Right. So some doctors don't want you eating excessive amounts of green leafy vegetables. So it doesn't mean no green leafy vegetables. It means excessive amounts. And juicing can sometimes, like green juices can sometimes, they're obviously a concentrated and form. And when you have green juices, be careful about the amount of sugar in them. Well, yeah, I get mine with no fruit. Right. So I don't do apple in mine. So if anything, I might do like a half of a beet because that's good for your liver, right? And it's good for blood flow. Good for blood But flow. don't let them put two beets in it because that's too much sugar. The other thing is for your kidneys, be careful because kidneys are one of the organs of detoxification. If you have kidney stones, so it's funny, I actually went on the website for the kidney, you know, the uh, American Kidney Association, and they don't recommend not eating greens. So most doctors will tell you stop eating green leafy vegetables if you have kidney stones. The actual, the kidney association is like, yeah, that's not good for you because vegetables are so valuable for so many things. What they do say is don't eat an excessive amount and don't don't do, um, don't vary them like a ton, right? So you don't want to vary that, like you want to be eating consistent amounts. So they actually recommend other ways of managing your kidney stones, like drinking a lot of water. And you can go on their website and get all of this. And we have other podcasts and I have other YouTube um, uh, videos where you can actually get that information. So, but for your kidneys, if you are trying to limit your oxalates, then don't drink an excessive amount of green drinks. So that's what you need to know about green drinks. Awesome. The last thing in detoxifying your body is get rid of the toxic thoughts mm -hmm. you have. It actually affects your body, doesn't it? And the toxic people. Yeah. So you have to be careful with both of those. Now, isn't that interesting that toxic thoughts create a toxic body? Every thought you have affects every cell in your body. Yeah. Toxic thoughts or like pollution in the Los Angeles basin. I thought the part, the thing that I think stuck with me the most when I first met you was seeing the before and after scan of the woman who was focusing on gratitude in one scan and then was focusing on something she hated in this, the other scan. She didn't look, it didn't look like the same person. Now it deactivated her brain in a very that negative way. That shocked me, which means it's also changing chemistry. Right. Well, it changes chemistry, absolutely. So that's... So, and I knew that a long time ago. We do a lot of biofeedback here. So we hook up your hand temperature, your heart rate, your muscle tension, how you breathe, um, how much you sweat. And, you know, ever since 1989, when I started Amen Clinics, I'd do a word association mm -hmm. test for people to see, well, what triggered stress in their body. 
So when they thought about negative things, immediately their hands get cold, colder, their hands get wetter, their muscles get more tense, their breathing changes. And it happens immediately when they think about positive, happy, hopeful things. Their skin gets drier, their hands get warmer, their muscles get more relaxed, their breathing becomes deeper and more regular, and it, and it happens immediately. Toxic thoughts change your body immediately. And that's so, so as somebody who's had cancer, right, and who was really sick as a kid and who had lots of other health issues, when I heard that and saw that, I went, whoa, okay, so you mean growing up in a, in a toxic environment when I was a kid just might have had something to do with that. Now, I can't change what happened in the past, but I can certainly focus on making it better going forward. Well, and as somebody who has two black belts, that took a lot of work. Right. And it took a lot of discipline. Right. What I want our listeners to do is discipline their minds mm -hmm. to get them going in a helpful direction. And that takes work. Right. It takes some discipline that you don't have to believe every stupid thought you have. And that's why whenever you feel sad, mad, nervous, or out of control, we want you to write down your thoughts. I mean, it's really the best way to detoxify your brain is write down your thoughts, correct them, and get them going in a more helpful direction. Absolutely. Stay with us. You're listening to The Brain Warrior's Way. Thank you for listening to The Brain Warrior's Way podcast. We have a special gift for you. It's an opportunity to win an evaluation at the Amen Clinics. All you have to do is subscribe to this podcast, leave a review, and rate us on iTunes. To learn more about Amen Clinics and the work we do, go to amenclinics.com. You can also learn about our nutraceutical products at brainmdhealth.com. Thanks for listening.